as I said, welcome everyone. Um, the topic for today is using the, the grid block. And as mentioned, we'll do a quick introduction and then we will look at some demos to see how, to, how, how we can use the, the grid block in action. So um, I thought let's just look at a quick definition. Um, so the grid block is a variation of the group block, which allows you to display the blocks within a group as a grid offering new flexibility and ease of use with visual resizing options. Now, the nice thing about the, the, the grid block, as you'll see, is you can actually um, visually drag um, columns and, and rows to, to enlarge those. But I, I, I have a, a disclaimer that I want to share. Um, the, the grid block does not offer granular control over mo mobile responsiveness. So um, you will need to test your designs on smaller screen sizes before publishing. Um, Laura and I actually also just chatted about this, but um, you know, you want to keep mobile, um, you want to be, think of, of mobile first for, for users. We know that probably more than half of, of users of websites probably um, visit your website on their mobile phone. So always keep that in mind. And if you use the, the grid block as we'll do today, um, please check those designs on, um, on, on, on different types of devices to see what the design looks like. And I, I'll be honest with you, um, there are a few designs that I tried out and then it did not work or did not display um, as I wanted it to on a, a mobile device. And then I had to kind of make some tweaks and, and, and changes. And the demos that I'm gonna show you today, um, you know, displayed correctly on, on, on desktop or on tablet or on, on mobile. Now, there are different types of designs that you can create um, using the grid block. Um, now, this is a, a really cool design that I, that, I, that I saw out there. I'm not going to recreate this one today, but this is a, a bento grid. And um, bento grids are something you, you see uh, more and more these days. And I will also um, show you how you can create a, a, a bento grid or a, a type of design as this um, in today's session. All right, so um, let me jump out of here and make my way to my test website first. And I thought, I just wanna um, mention two things before I look at my, my first example. So this is not my first example. I just wanted to highlight something um, regarding the grid block before we move into our, our demos. So the first thing, when you add a grid block, as you will notice, I've already added my, my grid block and I've added some content to, to save time. But when you add your grid block, you have an option between auto and, and manual. So if you click on auto, um, it generates the grids and rows automatically using the minimum column width for each item. And you can then, of course, update this as you please. But if you select manual, um, it allows you to specify the exact number of columns. And um, you will notice I've selected manual here and I've selected two columns. Now also something to note, when you select manual and, and you select the amount of columns, um, if you look at it on on mobile, it will actually show you two columns. Whereas if I selected auto and I check it on mobile, you will notice um, it is automatically responsive. So that's also something to, um, to take note of. All right, so let me just grab this. Now, something else, I'm just gonna select manual for now. And I actually want two columns. And the other thing that I wanted to, to note before looking at our first example is the fact that um, you can change columns or you can enlarge the columns and the rows of a, a child grid. Now, if you select your grid block, or sorry, if you select a child grid and you open styles and scroll down, you will see the option column span and row span. And you can enlarge this so it can go across two columns. 
Or if you select row span and you say, I want this to um, go across two rows, um, you can do that using your sidebar settings or styles. But as I mentioned, you can actually visually drag, drag it as well. So let's look at a quick example. Let's take this child grid. Um, open my sidebar settings and say, we want this to go across, um, let's say, two columns. And then let's select this child grid. And now I'll show you how you can visually do this. So I'm just going to drag and it will cross over to um, two rows. All right, let's add some more content here. Let's hit save. And now let me just quickly check it out on a tablet and on mobile. Okay, so those are just the, the two main things I wanted to, to highlight. Um, auto manual and the fact that you can use row span and column span. Okay, so now let's look at the first example um, for today. All right. So here is my, um, my design that I created for this online workshop. And I'm going to recreate this with you now. And I actually used a, a columns block to, to help me out um, as well. And you're probably wondering how I was able to find images that all look the same. I actually went on to un, um, Unsplash, you know, one of those websites where you can get free images. And I, I found um, a photographer who basically took the same type of images, or this was actually from a, um, a museum, um, and they shared these images, and um, it worked really well for this design because there's cohesion, and um, it's all from the 1700s, 1800s. Okay, so let's get cracking. All right, so here's my, my page. Let's open my list view. I'm just going to keep that at the top and we will recreate this below this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll say add after. And I'm going to first add a columns block. And then select two equal columns. Then I will select the parent columns block. As you'll notice, I'm in the left column right now. I'm going to select the, the parent column. And we are going to say we want this in full width. And now, while we are still selecting the parent block, we're going to add some, some padding and block spacing. So let's open our settings. We'll do that to the parent block. So I'm going to add some padding. Let's add medium, medium left and right as well and for the block spacing as well there we go so we've added some some padding we can see that if we hover over over the padding now with that in place we can go and add a grid block to our left column so of course you can add a group and then select the grid block. As mentioned, the grid block is a, um, a variation of the group block, but I'll just go ahead and type in grid. We can add our grid block. And for this grid block, I want to select manual and I, uh, I want to display two columns. Okay, now the first block that I'm gonna add. Now, the cool thing is, you can do all of your design in, in one grid, and then you can, of course, duplicate. So that's just a time saver. Um, so let's add our first, 
first child grid and I'm going to use a cover block because I want to display some text over my my um, my image and now I can select my first image okay so I've selected my image and I will select the cover block and you were probably you probably saw that I've I've added some some rounding or um, rounded corners to my to my my cover block so select your cover block open styles and we will make our way to border and shadow and for radius we can say we want a a 20 pixel radius and that provide that provides that rounded um radius that we see in in our example the other thing i want to check is my overlay now the overlay color automatically got got added to the image and you'll notice all these images are kind of the same but i've decided on a specific um hex code and the hex code i'm going to use for all of these is c six c to B one. All right, so my overlay um, color has been changed and I'm going to keep the opacity at 50. Then within my cover block, we are going to add a stack block because we want to stack uh, some paragraphs. So I'll add my stack block and then I will add a paragraph and the name of the artist is William Alexander. I'll press enter. And this image was painted in 1790. Then I'll select my stack block and I want to remove some block spacing. So I'll open my sidebar settings again. And let's just make sure there's no block spacing. Now I also want to style my, my text a bit. So I'll select my first paragraph and the size I want is small. And for the, the date, I actually want, I'll choose REM. I want this to be even smaller. So I'm going to say 0 0.8 and I want to change the appearance. So I'll click on typography, go to appearance and select extra light. There we go. Now I'll select my cover block again. And here we can use our block tool, block toolbar. I want to change the content position and I will change the content position to top right. There we go. And let's add some padding as well. So let's open our styles and let's say we want to add some padding to today. <clears throat> now we are going to duplicate, right? So we've done most of the design work and now we can, can duplicate this um, cover block so duplicate i want five images and duplicate now just a reminder this is where we are are heading to but i'll show you now all right so now i've done this part um And we want this image to cover two rows. So I'm going to select this image. And as I said, we can now visually drag this child grid. And okay. Now that's something I, I saw happening. Um, I don't know if this is a bug, but if I open my, my styles, that should not be happening. If I say, 
there we go. Um, when I dragged that now, it actually all enlarged, but I didn't want that. So um, I just went over to my sidebar settings and I selected, I want a row span of two. All right. So we, we're getting closer. All right. Um, now we are going to duplicate our column. So that's the left column. So make sure you select the left column and now we're gonna duplicate that column. And now we can delete this third column that's empty. Okay, cool. So as you will notice, this image is on, on the same, on the, on the right now, but we want to push it to the, to the top here. So I'm just gonna use my mover or my little arrow and I'm going to push this to that side. Great. And now um, I'm going to update the aspect ratio. Because as you will notice, um, in my example, all those um, child grids look exactly the same. They, they are square and um, the great thing is if I select the aspect ratio or the square aspect ratio, um, it will it will appear exactly the same on, on mobile. Okay, so now we can select our... I actually want to see if I can select all of them. Let's see. Apart from that one. Wait, let me just see. Sorry, I just want to see if I can do all of this. No. Let me see if I can just do this. I want to check something. Yeah. Okay. So I'll 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 check. I'll select all three of them to save some time, and then we can open our styles and go to aspect ratio. And I'm going to sh um, select a square aspect ratio. And then of course I'll also do this one separately. Open styles and square. And I'll do the same on, on the other side. So I can actually hold in shift, select all of the cover blocks, open styles, and we can select a square aspect ratio. Ha! Huh. And now the cool thing is, because I've done all the design work in my first child grid, um, you will notice that um, The, the overlay color has, has, has stayed in place. And, and now we can, of course, start tweaking the content and, um, and replacing the images. So let's just look at a few examples. So I can select the child grid and now we can say replace. And I can select this image. But now you will notice when I replace the image, the image, um, because of the image, WordPress automatically added a, a different overlay color. So if I just select this one again, sorry, I just wanna, I'll go to overlay, I'll open the color and I'll just, you know, copy the hex code. And then I can go back to this child grid, open the overlay, I think it's actually 2B1. Oh, it is actually correct. All right, so that is correct. But that's one reason I decided, oh, I'm going to change the content position of my text because of the trees on this image. So I can select this cover block and say, let's change the content position. I'll select my stack block and let's justify the item to center. A line middle and then we can keep going so oh this is something else i wanted to show you all right so let's just check if the overlay is correct yes it is but now you will notice the image is not displaying the way i want it to 
But of course, that's why you've got the focal point picker. So I'm going to open settings, scroll down, and I'm just going to remove move the focal point picker over to the left. And now, of course, this is what we will see on desktop and mobile, um, this part of, of the image. Okay, let's replace. Um, I think it's this one. Select, let's replace this one. And again, I want to change the, the content position to actually bottom, bottom right. And of course, there's different people that um, painted these images. So now I can, for example, change the, the name. This, for example, was um, John... And this image is from 1850. And now I can save. And of course, I don't have to go through all of this now. I think everyone got the, the, the idea. Um, but you will notice on, on my original example, I've already um, updated the, the names and the dates. And all the child grids have got the um, overlay color that I added with a 50% um, opacity. And now we can check it out on, on mobile. So let's, I've already um, opened it up in inspect. Or maybe I should just do it from there for folks that, that want to know how I, how I did that. So, um, for those folks who, who might be unsure, I'm okay. This is on the front end of my site, so I'll right click, click on inspect, and here you can let's just um, drag this a bit closer. Here at the top on the right, you'll see a little toggle device toolbar, so then I can select um the the mobile tablet device and now you can literally drag and see that is it is responsive it's mobile responsive hey. and on a hey Wes, screen, we had a question yeah go ahead um this is pr from the previous uh sh example that you had shown uh when you uh, put on that um, toggle for manual, how do you fix mobile if you use manual? So, um, as you'll notice, I think the, the way I got around it, I believe, um, is I selected the um, aspect ratio for my images. And because of, uh, because of the fact that I selected the aspect ratio, um, I, um, I think that's what, what made it work on, on mobile. But I, but I do understand the question because I, I think I showed you the text example earlier on. If you look at this example, um, if I inspect, you know, if I, was it the second one? Ah, now this is interesting. Sorry, I just want to double check something. So, yeah, I was yeah. going to ask you about this because of the fact that it stays in the two columns, but it would make more sense if they stacked on top of each other for readability. Correct. So that's why you would probably then go with um, with um, the auto. Um, you will probably need to. That's what I. That that's my disclaimer at the beginning. Um, <laughs> but I do I do wonder if I look at this group block. Um, I'm just trying to think. I will I will look at another um, text example um, at the end. No, no, no. Sorry, that is actually my second example. So so let's look at, at that that example and see if we can find um, an answer. 
but yeah, just getting back to here before we move on. Um, yeah, very happy with my um, with my design, and that the fact that it is responsive. So again, um, if I just quickly look at this, I use the columns block. This is the left column. This is the the right column. Any questions about this design? And yeah, as I mentioned, I I used manual and I wanted to keep two columns. I do wonder though, um, if the fact that it's in a columns block also um, supports the, the responsiveness. We do have a question. Mm. Um, if this were a post list, this column approach would not work, especially if we stack them on mobile. Will we see an example today using dynamic information like post in a query? No, I, I don't think we'll we'll have time to to go into that. Okay. And then Robert says, why didn't you start with a grid block? Well, that's what I mentioned. I think at the beginning, um, I I did have trouble um, with the the mobile version and the way it displayed on mobile, and then adding it to the the columns block um, helped me to overcome that. Um, I actually spoke to a designer. I mentioned this to Laura. I spoke to a designer um, that that works um, with me as well, and. Um, you know, even she had a bit of a bit of trouble um, with the the grid block, and um, yeah, that's why I thought if I can show you some good examples today, you can maybe go ahead and and use some of these elements. Yeah, I think it's still new that um, there's not a lot of uh, settings that are part of the the grid block that we need to be able to put it into another um, block as a a column or group so that we have those extra settings to enable padding and, and things like that. So um, it, it, it'll be a work in progress, this block. Yeah, so so let's look at a text example. Um, I This is the, the text example that I, that I created that I thought I'll, I'll recreate with you. So let me just click inspect and see what happens here. So, as you will notice, this is this is changing dynamically. But to be honest with you, uh, it took me a while to to figure it out because um, sometimes there's there's gaps on mobile or on tablet. Um, so that's why I said you, you you've got to be you've got to, got to be con cognizant of, of of that. Okay, so let's recreate this um, example and see how I how I did that this one. This time I actually did not add it to a a group or a a columns block. So let me select add after. And the first thing we'll do is we'll add a grid block from the get-go. And this time I'm going to change the width to wide width. And I'm going to keep it on auto. I just want to double check. I'm going to keep it on auto. But I'm going to change the minimum column width, and this is also helpful um, when you when you work with the um, the the grid block and also for mobile for for mobile view. But I'm going to increase this to 16 rem. Is it better to work with the rem as opposed to pixel or the no. other? No, it's okay. it's. I think it depends on what you prefer. Um, if I take it to pixels, you'll know I could have changed it to 250 pixels. 
Um, that's also fine. Or two fifty six. I didn't notice... know if one was one was more mobile responsive than the other. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think it's maybe what you are used to. But you'll you'll notice that um, it automatically gives the um, the column width in rem. So you have to change it to to pixel um, if you wanted to. Okay, so now I've added my grid block. I've selected auto. I've changed the minimum column width to 16 rem. And now I'm going to go ahead and add content to my first child grid. And this time I'm going to add a stack block. And the stack block, of course, will support responsiveness. So keep that in mind as well. I'm, I'm using blocks and, and blocks are mobile responsive. So um, the stack block, I think, supports that. All right, so added my stack block. And now I'm going to change the background color of my of my stack block. So the hex code that I have for this one is 709F9D. There we go. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to remove the padding for now. So just kind of keep that in mind if you work with the stack block. Um, it already adds the padding when you, you add. So I'm just going to um, remove margin and padding. And now, just to save time, I'm just going to copy this text. So I'll select those paragraphs. I'll copy. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do it all separately. So there we go. Okay, so let's add a paragraph. And there we go. So now you'll notice I've actually removed all the padding and margin, right? But that was on purpose um, so that I can select it myself. So now I'll select my um, stack block again. And now I can say, okay, well, um, let's add some padding. I'll keep it at small or, you know, three bars. And yeah, I think I'm going to leave margin for now. Okay, so now I've got my text. Um, and now I can go ahead and duplicate, right? Because I've done my design bit. So let's duplicate this five times or four times so that there's five images. Or well, not images, but child grids. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now let's hope that the, it, it works visually. Uh, but now I can say, all right, but I want this to cross over two columns. So I'm just dragging. And there we go. I want that to stay in place. This one can stay in place. I also want this to cross over two columns. So I'll drag that. And then the last one, I actually want to cross over to three columns. There we go. Now I want to remove some text on this side. There we go. I actually want to remove some text on this side. And on this, in this child grid, I want to add a, a call to action. So I'm going to add a buttons block. So let's add a buttons block and say, learn more. And I'll open styles. I will go for an outline style. And then we can change the background color to white. Sorry, no, 
undo that. I just wanted to change the text to white. There we go. And then I want to change the size of my call to action to small. And then of course you'll just need to add the, the link of, of your, your call to action. And then on in this column, I might add some more content actually. And let's tweak this part. But now the one thing I did forget, um, and let's see if I can do that in one go now. Let's see if that works. If I hold in shift and select all of my stack blocks, I can open styles and let's change the radius of our stack block to 10. No, that did not work. I should have done that at the um, at the start. So, um, so let's just quickly do that. Ten. So that's why it's really helpful, the duplicate option. So you don't have to do all of this for each block. And now it shows you why I should have done it at the start when I worked on my first child's grid. Okay. There we go. And now, of course, we can um, start changing the the background colors so let's change the the background color of this one i won't do all of it just to remind you of how to do it so um, i actually looked at some complementing colors so this was 815 e85 and then for this block this grid block we can change the color to um, five six seven d eight nine oh maybe I can just quickly do the last one seeing on there but let's just copy the X code copy the X code of that one um, I want to see yeah so let's styles and paste. I just said command V and there we go. Now I can save. Now remember when I when I um created this I selected wide width for my um for my grid block and now we can view it on on mobile. So let's say preview in new tab, inspect. This was the, the new one, right? And now we can can see it is mobile responsive. So getting back to that, I do believe the fact that I use the stack block um, also helped me in this endeavor to, to make it mobile responsive. All right, Laura. So that's the second um, demo that I wanted to show you. And of course, this time I, I use the, the auto, the auto option. Where am I now? Sorry. Edit page. All right, anything that 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 I need to show again or any questions that came up? No questions right now, but uh, if anyone has any, please put them in the chat. Um, all right. Just want to double check. I haven't checked any messages, so I'm relying on on Laura um, in the group chat to um, 
to let me know. So if there's any questions, please pop it in the in the group chat. Um, yeah, if you if you if you send it to to Wes, I probably won't see then... it. <laughs> There's too much on a Zoom call these days. All yep. right, so. We look like we're good. All right, well, let me look at my, my last example and then we can open up for, for questions. The last one is, is also a bit shorter. Um, so here's my last example that I, that I wanted to show you, a design I, I worked on. Now, once again, uh, the first thing I did was I found pictures that kind of complement each other and that was all light and and bright so i just thought i'll mention that okay so what's going on here now all right so here you will notice i actually added two different um grid blocks so let's say add after Okay, let's quickly do this one. I'm going to add a grid. Whoops. I'll add my grid block. I'm going to change it to, to wide width. Again, I am going to change it to um, 16 rem. So I'm going to enlarge the minimum column width. And then in my first child grid, I'm going to add a cover block. And we can add the first image. I'll select the cover block. And the overlay color I want for all my images will be, will be white. And the opacity I want, actually not 50%, I want 30%. And we can go and change the radius now. So for the rounded effect, let's add a 20 um, pixel radius. And now we can duplicate this twice. So we have three images. I will select the first child grid and for um, we'll change the column span to two and now we can just go ahead and replace the images. Let's change it for this one. And of course, it, it looks a bit odd because I've um, I've got my my sidebar settings and list view open, but but there you can note there you can see that's the way I want it. And now we can just duplicate the grid. So let's duplicate the grid. And if I open this one, this time I'm just going to push. The image that crosses over two columns, I'm going to push to the right. And then, of course, we can um, replace this. And here we need our focal point picker again. So I'll open my, my list view and, and say, oh, let's change this so that I can actually see. Let's close this. So I can see better. There we go. And we'll quickly replace this image. One, two, and then we're done. We can save. So again, I kept this on manual. I changed it to 60, 16 rem. And then I just ended up duplicating the grid and changing the image so that I've got this kind of symmetry um, in the design. And now we can preview it. There's my original one. There's my new one. 
we can inspect to check it out. Okay, so I do yes, actually I see, a, yeah. Oh, I have a question. Did you try yeah. it where um, you didn't, you only used one grid block to do the whole thing? Was there a reason why you put it into two separate grid blocks? Um, so it was just um, easier for me to, to again, um, well, but now that I see this, I actually do see a problem. Um, let's just inspect this. Um, I did not see this earlier on, but okay, I just want to, it was due to the, the fact that it wasn't mobile responsive, but I see now if I drag it to this size, yeah, I've got, I've got this gap. Mm -hmm. So there I actually stumbled into, um, an issue. But it's weird. As soon as I, it's almost just like, it's just on that one responsiveness yeah it's just at this level so i don't know if this is relevant yeah because it, it looks fine on on everything else um but yeah the reason i i decided to um to duplicate the grid was yeah it was just easier for me um on on mobile but let's say for example we can quickly try that i mean we we are here now. So let's say, for example, so edit the page. Let's remove this grid. Um, let's just say we, all right, let's duplicate this one, duplicate. And we want two of these, right? So let's duplicate, keeping it all in one grid. Uh, and we want to push this over to the right. Okay, so I'm not going to change these images now and change the focal, um, but let's see. Um, preview in a new tab. So that looks fine on. Oh, that does look fine on. Um, Okay, so that's the beauty of WordPress, right? There's different ways to achieve the same thing. So yes, um, I could have just done it. Um, yeah, pull it, pull it out to like 11, it was 11.50 or something that there was the issue. Uh, I think it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... But again, it's just on that one. So I don't, I'm not completely, completely sure. I don't know if somebody else has got some, some advice here. Um, but it's just on that one little bit. As soon as I just go a bit larger, it all displays correctly. All right. Well, that's, we've got about seven minutes left. Um, so I'm going to open it up for, for, for chatting and discussion. So I'm going to stop the video recording for now, and then we can keep, keep the conversation going. But if you were watching online, thank you very much for joining.